prevention is better than cure. This is the thrust of two reports that were recently released by the United Nations. The United Nations has often been criticized for failing to adequately respond to conflicts. One such criticism relates to the timeliness of its interventions, which should be proactive rather than reactive. This has led to accusations that in some contexts, earlier measures could have prevented war from breaking out. The eagerly awaited UN peacekeeping and peace building reports were released on the 16th and the 29th of June. These reports have demanded a mind shift, one that places conflict prevention at the core of all UN activities. This mind shift means getting rid of terminology like post-conflict peace building and peace building architecture. Rather, peace building or sustaining peace as it is referred to in the review, becomes the common thread running through all UN operations. It is an umbrella concept that covers the entire conflict resolution spectrum, from mediation and peacemaking to peacekeeping. It refers to addressing the root causes of conflicts rather than applying quick-fix solutions. What does this mean for the functioning of the UN? It means the UN has to act more holistically and break the silo approaches that still dominate the institution. Peacebuilding was traditionally relegated to the activities of the Peacebuilding Commission, the Peacebuilding Fund, and the Peacebuilding Support Office. Now, member states must recognize the UN Security Council as the principal peacebuilding actor, working in closer partnership with the UN General Assembly and the Economic and Social Council. The Peacebuilding Commission should act as an advisory bridge to these entities. Member States will have to ask questions such as What mechanisms can be used to increase coordination among UN entities? How should peacebuilding objectives be decided on and monitored? What preventative criteria should be used for deciding when to intervene? How can partnerships with regional and sub-regional organizations be made stronger? What mechanisms will ensure predictable and stable peacebuilding financing? And what should be included in a UN resolution on sustaining peace? The new focus on conflict prevention will no doubt raise debate. When is the right time to intervene? How does involvement in other countries' affairs affect these states and their sovereignty. Resolving such questions will require dialogue and national consent. To get to that stage, it is vital that conflict prevention becomes a term that dominates all UN engagements. For more information on peacebuilding in Africa, visit www.issafrica.org.